Okay, great. So, hi everyone. Um, so, thanks, Edsar, uh, for already introducing data cubes. Uh, so, we, we have learned a bit about data cubes already, uh, and I think we saw that they are quite useful uh, as an interface how we can process large Earth observation data sets. Uh, so, in my workshop today and also in this presentation, I'd like to uh, talk a bit about the challenges we have when we're working with large satellite image collections. Uh, something like Sentinel-2 data as they are distributed uh, via download portals or also in the cloud. Um, and I'd like to talk a bit about some software I've been working on during the last year, essentially, uh, and that makes that a little easier. So let's have a look at how satellite imagery is distributed. So you might know this, this is a Copernicus Open Access Hub. This is a portal where you can download Sentinel imagery. And in this case, I just made a search query for some Sentinel-2 images over a certain area and time range. And this is what you get. So this is the results. And what you see here is that one image actually covers a spatial area of uh, 100 by 100 kilometers. And you get, for the same area, you get an image every five days. Uh, so that essentially is like a data cube. So it's pretty easy to analyze. But as soon as your study area is larger than a single tile of these uh, areas, then it's getting more difficult. Because if you see adjacent images here, they spatially overlap. And also, even though for one image you get really like every five days a new image, but the image at the left side here might be taken like two or three days later. So essentially that is a quite irregular time series in the end. And you have to organize it on your own. Uh, and then also there's a problem, the practical problem, that if you have like these eastern images here and the western images here and you want to combine it and analyze together, the problem is that uh, they, they come from different UDM zones and you have to reproject first. So that's not very difficult, but it's actually a lot of work to do. And uh, sometimes you need to do it on your own. So. What we want to have is actually something like a data cube, as we saw. And when I talk about data cubes, I'm essentially focusing on a very specific type of a data cube that is uh, very much um, yeah, um, suited for this kind of data I just presented. So Sentinel-2 image time series, something like that. So um, it's four-dimensional raster data cubes. It's a four-dimensional array with two spatial dimensions, one time dimension and one dimension for the spectral bands or also other variables. Um, so and that data cube has a single spatial reference system, so which is convenient to work with. Um, so this data cube has um, the cells have constant temporal duration and also the spatial size. Uh, and then every combination of band time and um, x and y values actually yields uh, a real number. So that's a data structure which is very nice to work with and very easy. Uh, but then it's not so straightforward to construct this data structure from the raw data you get at the download portals or also in the cloud. Um, so what do we need if, to do if we want to create a data cube? So at first, we need to think about how our target data cube should look like. So and that depends on the application. So for instance, um, so you have to think about the spatial area and also the time uh, duration you want to, to analyze. Uh, then you have to think about resolution. So which resolution is, uh, is, is correct for your spatial analysis? So maybe you don't need the full resolution of the data. Um, and then also you have to think about the spatial reference system you want to use in your analysis and which spectral bands you actually need. Uh, so that's something you have to keep in mind. And then if you know this, you also have to understand the data product you are using. So uh, we saw the example of Sentinel-2. Um, but essentially, every Earth observation data product is organized quite differently. So they use different data formats, which is not actually a problem uh, because we have GDAL, so the library which essentially reads all relevant data, raster data formats. Uh, but they also use different um, approaches to, to split imagery into files. So sometimes one image is just one file containing all bands, but sometimes uh, is actually one, well, one file is essentially the data for one band. Um, so, and also we have to know how to derive date time of the images and so on. So we have to find something out of the metadata and also we have to tell the computer to understand it. Um, so that's also not so difficult, but it's, not, it's quite a bit of work you have to think about. So then to build a data cube, we have to 
warp all the images, so we have to reproject images, we have to rescale pixels, we have to crop some of them maybe, and all of that involves resampling, so we also have to think about the proper resampling algorithm we want to use. Um, and then because we also assume regular time durations of our, in our data cube, uh, we also have to combine values from different images. So for instance, if I'm defining a monthly data cube, so where one data cube cell uh, actually has one month duration, so we need, and we use Sentinel-2 data, and, uh, which is five daily, so we have to combine values from multiple images somehow, and then you have to think about which method you use. So do you want a median of the values or a minimum, maximum, mean, whatever. So that's all parameters you need to know and define um, if you want to work with data cubes. And of course, that also loses information to some degree. So um, our idea was actually to make this a little bit simpler and not to let users do that on their own, but um, uh, to make this as easy as possible. So um, what came out is um, actually an open source library called GDAL cubes. Uh, so this is mostly written in C++, but it has a much easier to use R interface as well, and that's also the topic of today's workshop. Um, so in that library essentially builds and processes data cubes from image collections that are not a data cube if you download them. Um, so the idea is that users define um, where the images are and from what data product they come from and then define the geometry of the target data cube, so the spatial temporal extent and the spatial and temporal resolution uh, and so on. And then the library essentially do, um, does all the pre-processing on its own. And uh, so all the image data then is uh, automatically processed on the fly. So all this reprojection things we have seen and so on uh, are uh, done on the fly. And then um, users also can define chain of operations they want to apply on the data cube, something like reducing over time dimen dimensions, uh, applying ar ar arithmetic expressions or so on. And then um, that's going to be performed automatically. And the nice thing is that um, this is really on demand and it's, um, the data is read only really when needed and also it takes care about tiling and parallelization. So and the library comes with some predefined formats uh, to automatically understand actually some data products like Sentinel-2, uh, Landsat, Modis, and a few others. So this is a minimal example in R, so it's well, almost reproducible, so if you would like to use it, you would have to point this path to somewhere on, on your disk or wherever where Sentinel-2 level 2a zip files are located. Um, so I'm not going it through it line by line now, so we have time in the, in the workshop later on to do this. Um, so the thing here is that it's actually only nine lines of code, um, and then where we define the data cube parameters I've shown, and then we get essentially a data cube if we plot it. And this looks, for instance, like this. So we have a data cube that has the first five bands of the, uh, of the Sentinel image collection we have, and then we have a monthly temporal resolution, so it also aggregated some of the images over time automatically. So and I think that makes it a, bit, a little bit easier to use. So another thing which, what we could do is, because it's highly built on, on GDAL and some imagery also come uh, with some image pyramids, it supports a more interactive workflow when you work with uh, your image collections. So for instance, um, I've just tested a few things and derived the median RGB values over a time series of Sentinel-2 level 2A images. So that was around 90 gigabytes, I think, on, on my computer. So just well, quite small stuff, actually, uh, if you look at Sentinel-2 data. Um, but if you, you can do that on low resolution first, which then takes like uh, a minute, and then, of course, to, uh, run it on full resolution, and that's only changing one number in the script. And then, of course, you need to wait a couple of time until the results are finished. So another, another thing uh, Edsa already mentioned uh, from data cubes is that they make it easier to combine data from different satellites. Um, so for instance, I can use the same like geometry of the cube, and, but load different data sets different, from different image collections. And then what we've done here is we combined MODIS vegetation index data. So this is actually six uh, days. And then with uh, MODIS land surface temperature data and some precipitation data from the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission. Um, 
And, this is essentially, so these have been pre-processed differently. So, for instance, the land surface temperature and the precipitation data, um, there are actually 30-day accumulated mean values. And then um, we anyway have a data cube in the end, a single data cube, um, which makes it a little easier, for instance, to study interaction between different environmental variables. Okay, so what will we do in the tutorial later on? Um, so we will look in detail into to the R package, and um, we will use it to create and process data cubes from Landsat Sentinel-2 and also MODIS imagery. Um, so we'll use up to a few hundred gigabytes uh, in the live demonstration. Uh, but, of course, we will also discuss some basic concepts and also some limitations of the approach. Uh, and then I will not talk for two hours, so you have the chance to work on your own with the package, and I have some prepared data set that you, you can download and, and try out on your own. So, um, all right, this is the last slide. So the course materials are on GitHub as well, and also the slides will be there later on. Uh, so I hope to see some of you later on, and um, thank you. <laughs>